What's up everyone, David here, super happy to be here today. This video has been requested by a lot of you guys actually, so this video is for you. Today, we're going to talk about Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne HD Remastered once again. We're one month and 20 days, um, around, around that at least, until the release of the game in the West. So of course this is the Japanese version of the game, and... I'm excited, and there's a lot of information that I think you guys should know before you buy Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne HD Remastered. So today, I'm giving you all the information that you need in regards to pricing, DLC, bugs, bugs problems, the release, etc. for the game. Here's everything that you need to know about SMT3 Nocturne HD Remastered. So first of all, Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne came out in February 2003 in Japan on the PlayStation 2, and it was later released in the West in October 2004 on the same platform, of course. It got re-released on the PlayStation 3 as a digital exclusive in May 2014 as a straight port of the PlayStation 2 version. On July 20, 2020, Atlas revealed during a Nintendo Mini Partner Showcase that they're re-releasing the game on modern system, that being the Nintendo Switch and the PlayStation 4. The game released in October 2020 in Japan, and the game released to massive success as it sold over 100,000 copies in its first week in Japan, which is very good for the series of games. But, of course, we gotta mention that there was a lot of controversy surrounding the release, and today we're gonna talk about that. The week after the game released in Japan, Atlus went out of their way to announce that they're gonna work on the game after release to patch it. They didn't give much information, they only let us know that they would work on it again. So we didn't know if they would just fix the issues, if they would add content, etc. So today we're gonna talk about all of that. On March 19th, 2021, Atlas finally revealed that SMT3 Nocturne HD Remastered is coming in the West on May 25th, and it is releasing on Steam as well, which was a cool surprise because before we had the Switch version and we had the PS4 version too, but nothing when it comes to the Steam version of the game, so that's very exciting for people who don't own a Switch or a PS4 or simply want to play on their PC. First up, let's talk about the performance for this game because I know that this is going to be one of the biggest questions that some of you guys have. So when it comes to the performance of the game, I'm only going to talk about the state of the game today. How does it play today? I own the game, I played it, played it on PS4 and I played it on Switch as well. So. Let's talk about it real quick, shall we? First of all, I really gotta mention, because I keep hearing false information in that regards, the PlayStation 4 version and the Nintendo Switch version are identical. Or there's a minor differences maybe when it comes to loading times, but extremely minor. Nothing like Persona 5 Strikers, for example. So both versions are running almost the same. They have the same issues. So if you're thinking of buying the PS4 version because you want to avoid frame drops, you can buy the Switch version if you want to play it portably, if you prefer to the Switch version for whatever reason. But both versions when it comes to performance are the same way. And if you're playing on PlayStation 5, you're not getting any improvements from the PS4 version. You're gonna play it through backwards compatibility, but there's no improvements. You're still gonna get those frame drops, you're still gonna get those um, little issues of the original versions. Now when it comes to the Steam version, it's hard to tell because as I mentioned before, when it released in October of last year in Japan, there was no Steam version. So the Steam version is basically releasing as a new game. We don't have a Steam version of the game yet, so we don't know how it's gonna run on Steam. Now if I were you, I'm not interested in the, P the Steam version. Personally, I'm buying the Switch version to play it on and I'm also gonna buy the PS4 version for collection purposes because I'm a dumbass, <laughs> but uh, if you're interested in the Steam version, I would be careful if I were you, so simply because if we look at the last two releases that Atlas dropped on Steam, uh, there was issues with both of them, like Persona 4 Golden when it first released, there was a couple of little issues, there, there was frame drops which are still present in the, the port, nothing game breaking or anything, definitely not, I played a lot of hours of P4G on Steam and it's running fine but there's little issues that shouldn't be there if it was optimized properly and at first they patched that but there was also some crashing issues. Speaking of crashing issues, Persona 5 Strikers had a lot of crashing issues when the game first released in February of this year in the west on Steam, they fixed that at least, so when it comes to Nocturne, the game's already running poorly on consoles, so if you're interested in the Steam version, maybe wait a couple of days just to see what's the reception to this version. That's what I would suggest, but at the end of the day, it's it's not a full price release, so you can still buy it and Atlas will probably fix it if there's issue. 
because maybe they learn from their mistakes and there won't be any issues with the Steam version. Hopefully that's the case. So as I mentioned, we're looking at the current state of the game today. And the first thing that hits right when you boot up the game is the aspect ratio. You might have heard of the aspect ratio situation with this game. Of course, we saw that in the original reveal trailer. Whenever you're in traveling in the world, you're in combat or whatever, it is widescreen. So they, they put a widescreen on um, those on those parts of the game, which makes sense because we're playing on big HD televisions now. So we don't want the 4x3 four three, uh, four three aspect ratio anymore. But for whatever reason, Atlas had the good idea to not touch the cutscenes. That's right, so when you're in the field, you have a beautiful widescreen setup. And when you enter a cutscene, it still has the good old PlayStation 2 4x3 aspect ratio, which, look, which looks super weird on a 4K TV. So, it's it's weird. Once again, it's not game-breaking or anything. But it's, it just shows that there's a lack of effort in this port, unfortunately. So that's the first thing that you'll notice when trying Nocturne HD once it releases in a month. When it comes to bugs and various lags and frame drops, etc., um, they really did a good job reworking the initial release. Because when it first released, when I got my copy, there was a lot of issues. Like, you're, you're just walking around the dungeon and it was frame dropping. Uh, on PS4 and on Switch, both versions. Um, in combat, in cutscenes... Frame drops was the biggest issue. I didn't experience any crashes myself or freezes or anything like that, but definitely frame drops. And it's a PS2 port, so there's not really a reason for that. So they reworked that, and I'm gonna be really honest, they did a good job. They fixed most of it. When you're traveling in the dungeons and stuff, for me personally, I'm not the best to notice frame drops or anything. But when you're traveling in dungeons, when you're not, when there's not much going on on screen at once, frame drops are almost absent. They're very minor if there's some. Now in combat though, or during certain cutscenes, it struggles at times. Like when you're doing a a certain spell that hits multiple enemies on screen, like I found the uh, Zeo spells to be a bit worse. They make they make the frame suffer a bit, uh, so th there's still some frame drops today, and I don't personally think they're gonna rework those. We're we're really far after release, so I don't think they're gonna still reward that. So yeah, to be honest, um, frame drops once again not a deal not a deal breaker for me, but definitely something that shouldn't be there. Being a PS2 port still shows that the optimization for this game is very lacking. To summarize everything, it's just very clear that it's all about optimization because come on on PlayStation 4 on PlayStation 5 I can play Nocturne HD Remastered in a month. I can also play on the same system God of War the latest one 60 frames per second and I'm not gonna get any issues with it. Now when playing a PS2 game it's struggling so that shows that the hardware is not the issue it's all about the optimization and the quality of the sport nintendo switch same thing i can play doom the frame rate is stable i can play breath of the wild it's almost perfect so atlas really failed when it comes to optimizing their game here again i want to stress that out not a deal breaker but those little issues that will bother you while playing shouldn't be there Another complaint that people had with the overall quality of this port is definitely what in regards to the music. Now, if you're a fan of Nocturne, if you're a fan of Shin Megami Tensei in general, you love your SMT music. Atlas, they have some of the best composers, the best video game music composers of all time in my opinion. And Nocturne is no exception. The soundtrack for Nocturne is fantastic. When it released on PlayStation 2, it had compressed music, of course. And after, we got the orchestrated soundtrack that got released as well, which was sold to the public. Now, in this remaster, some people were expecting the orchestrated soundtrack, but um, it's nowhere to be found. They actually dropped the compressed music in the port, even if they have access at Atlas to the orchestrated soundtrack, so that's super weird. I don't have the information on why that's the case. Very weird. I, I don't understand why they decided to skip it. I mean... If the orchestrated soundtrack was non-existent, well, I do understand that it would require a lot of work for them to put it in the game. But it's already here. It's already available. So it's it's hard to tell, honestly. I have no idea why they didn't have this. But once again, it gives me an idea and I think Atlas just didn't care that much about this port. Or maybe they didn't have a big budget for it, which sucks because... We're excited to play Nocturne again, and it's one of their best games, if not their best game, so... 
it deserved more than that so it, i'm not complaining it's just disappointment now probably the biggest controversy around this game and i know that a lot of you guys are here for this reason is the pricing and the use of dlc um, if you will allow me for this section of the video, I'm not gonna give my opinion on all of that because I think prices and stuff is very, it, your opinion, it's, it's all about your opinion, whether you're willing to pay that price or not. So I'm just gonna state facts and we can talk about opinions in the comment sections below, absolutely. And we also did a podcast once we got all that information. So if you wanna hear my opinion and all of that, I'll link it down in the description below so you guys can check it out. Great podcast, by the way. Now. $50 is the price. 50 US dollars is the price for the base version once it releases. Whether you're buying it on PS4, Switch, or Steam, it's the same price for all the versions. It's basically the same price as Catherine Full Body on Switch, which was their latest port. So I was expecting 50. We had this whole debate in this Discord server before. I had 50 in mind. Most people said 40, which made sense. Uh, I was ex I was hoping 40, but unfortunately I was right. It's 50 dollars. So so if you're willing to pay the, uh, to, to buy this game, 50 bucks is the price. Now Atlas also revealed that they are doing a deluxe digital deluxe edition. Pardon me, and this one is 70 dollars. This version is the same as the base game, but you're getting all the DLC, all the paid DLC is included in this version, and you get to play the game on the 21st, so four days before anyone, everyone else uh, in the world. Now the one thing that's kind of a bummer is that this deluxe edition is not available physically. So if you want to get uh, all the DLCs for a lower price, you I think you're saving like. Five, five bucks or so and you want to play the game before everyone well you got to spend twenty dollars more and you you're not getting a physical edition so yeah now let's look at the massive list of dlc for this release um of course we do love those dlcs for a 50 dollar remaster remaster of a ps2 board but let's look at them now the first dlc that's available to you is the maniacs pack and this one is the most expensive one it's ten dollars us now in the base game, you get Raido Kuzunoha from the Devil Summoner series, uh, and if you buy the Maniacs pack, Raido gets replaced by Dante from the Devil May Cry series. And note that Dante was in the original version in the West. Uh, Atlas probably had to pay rights to get Dante in this remastered again in 2021, and Atlas is basically asking their fans to pay for the rights uh, to get Dante in. So if you want Dante, 10 bucks is the price for um, Dante. Now, I just want to mention Raido Kuznoha on Steam. You have to download the Chronicles pack. You heard me correctly, only on Steam. You have to download a free download, which is called the Chronicles pack, and that will give you Raido Kuznoha. It's basically a day one patch, if you will. So that's free, and for whatever reason, you have to download that day one on Steam, but on PS4 and Switch, it's in the base game. I don't understand why, but hey, this is the information that they gave us. Now, the second pack that you can buy is called the Mercy and Expectation Map Pack. Now, this one, I honestly couldn't care less about. It's $7 US. It gives you access to a lot of items that earns you money and or experience when you're in extra dungeons. So, it's basically a grinding DLC that if you want to make the game easier, that's 7 bucks for you that you have to pay, which will give you a chance to succeed easier. Uh, yeah, so that's it for this pack. The next one is the Shimagami Tensei BMG pack, which is $8 US. Uh, this one is kind of interesting to me, to be honest. Uh, I'm absolutely not buying the Maniacs pack because I'm Team Raido, obviously. Uh, Mercy and Expectation pack, I couldn't care less. And the BMG pack is actually kind of interesting. I don't know if I want to spend that money on it, but we'll see. It's still pretty cool. Now. Let me explain what it is. This pack basically allows you to change the background music from Nocturne to background music from other Shin Megami Tensei titles when you're in battle or in the Vortex world. By buying this pack, you get eight tracks, two for each game. Those being Shin Megami Tensei 1, Shin Megami Tensei 2, SMG4, and 4 Apocalypse. Very cool. Uh, all those games have some amazing music, amazing background music. So the ability to change those I gotta say is is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It's a DLC though. It's a paid DLC, but it's it's still pretty cool. Now the last DLC that's available is a free DLC, that being the merciful mode. So that's basically the easy mode. So 
If you're a recent Shin Megami Tensei fan, if you're, for example, someone that jumped into the series with a game like Persona 5, well, the game's way... For Persona 5, for example, is way easier than mainline games like Nocturne. So, this is a cool mode that will allow you, if you don't want to struggle too much, to get through the game pretty easily. I don't know how easy it is, but I've heard it's very easy. It's like a journalist mode or something. So yeah, definitely if you're interested and you don't want to struggle, you just want to experience the story, the music, the characters, etc. You can buy, uh, you can download this Merciful Difficulty Mode DLC for free at launch. Pretty cool for, for those who are interested in it. Now this is it, this is all that you had to know when it comes to SMT3 Nocturne HD Remastered. It is a month away, I cannot wait to play this game again. If you haven't played Nocturne, if you're just a little bit interested in the Shin Megami Tensei series, do yourself a favor. This game is awesome, it is a cult classic, you should absolutely play it. Uh, if you think the price is too steep and you want to wait, I cannot blame you to be honest. Um, I, again, I think the performance issues and all of that is a bummer, but I don't think it's a deal breaker um, either way. At least it's not for me. So I hope that informed you guys enough. I hope you got the information that you were hoping to get in this video. If you did, please drop a like. It helps a ton. As always, if you're new to the channel and if you're interested in anything Atlas, Shimagami Tensei Persona, I'm a big fan. You're at the right place. Please consider subscribing. I cover news as soon as they drop, so ring that little bell icon to get notified as well. Thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.